Hello class. Today we're going to be talking more about coils. In this demonstration, I'm going to be making a decorative vessel that has its coils exposed. So we're going to be focusing on blending our coils on the inside to make a strong structure. I'm going to show you how to improvise a banding wheel from like just, you know, a regular plate they have around your house. Like I've got a nice banding wheel in my home studio, but I'm going to assume that a lot of you working at home in quarantine do not. So I'll be showing you how to improvise that. And yeah, it's going to be pretty great. Let's talk about tools that we're going to need. So if you have a serrated rib, these are great. This is great for slipping and scoring. I'm going to be putting on a handle onto this vessel. So I'm going to need to slip it a little bit. So I got this. Other great ribs that you're going to need is a simple flat rib. We're going to use this to smooth out our vessel. We're also going to need a wood knife with a scooped end. This is going to be good for blending the inside of it because eventually we're not going to be able to fit our hand inside of our pot. So we're going to need to have something to blend it. Bonus points if you have a compass, I'm going to use this to make a platform that's perfectly round. That way I have like a nice even place to build my coils on top of. A little bowl of water with a sponge. If you've got that round orange circular sponge, that works great. If you want to spend a little bit more money, these mud tool sponges are incredible. I like the blue workhorse sponge. I always have that out no matter what I'm doing. And if you've got a sheer form, low cheese grater, that works great too. Obviously, we're going to need some clay to work and a space in which to, you know, put our coils together. So I've got a nice canvas mat down. I've got a piece of gypsum panel to wedge on top of. Other things, you're going to need sooner or later to render some slip for yourself. Here's like a little small takeout container. I'm using um, Amico Marble X air dry clay for this project. So I've rendered a little bit of slip for myself. So let's talk a little bit first about rendering your slip because it's good to have a small container of whatever clay body you're using just ready and at hand. All right, so the first thing you're gonna need to do for rendering your slip is you wanna just take, oh, maybe a ping pong size amount of clay to start out with. I would put a, um, about three quarters of an inch worth of water in the bottom of your takeout container. And then you're gonna take this clay and you're just gonna tear it up into little balls. This air dry clay, it doesn't really wanna resaturate and break down. So we gotta tear this up into tiny little pieces. It just helps the water surround it, uh, separate those particles a little bit. That way you can, you know, have a nice sort of gooey slurry to glue things together. So I'd go through, I'd just tear this up, uh, start with one ping pong ball after you've got it torn up into little pieces like this, get out another ping pong ball sized piece of clay, tear that up and submerge it in that about, you know, three quarters of an inch to an inch of water. And then you let that, what we call slake, down overnight just let it soak in that water and then the next day with your wood knife you can go in and just mash that stuff up and then you'll have like a nice a nice slurry to work with and this stuff here is going to be perfect for gluing my handles on to my decorative pot when we're done so that'll be fun Put this to the side because I was using my blue sponge for a darker clay body for a different class and today I'm using my air dry clay. Um, me personally I'm a little oh anal retentive I guess about my tools like I've got a set of tools for dark clay I've got a set of tools for light clay 
And right now I have a set of tools for this air dry clay. So this is my air dry sponge. I'm gonna keep that in my bottle of water. We're gonna to get to it, all right? I'm gonna change my camera angle up here so you can see what my hands are doing. And you know, it'll kind of be like my hands are talking for the rest of the demo. All right, cool. So let's talk first about, you know, just setting up our platform. So I got my clay over here. Whenever I am not grabbing a piece of clay off, you can see I have my plastic set up so I can just cover this back over. That way my clay isn't getting drier as I'm working. And I'm gonna start out by setting my platform. So I want a piece of clay that's probably the size of a golf ball. Lucky me, I got some of my own hair in my clay. That's kind of gross, but at least I know it's mine. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to start out by just squeezing this ball of clay. It's about, I'd say, a little bit bigger than a golf ball. This is going to be my platform. I'm squeezing this, giving it some compressive wedging, squeezing out any air bubbles. All right, and now I'm going to go and roll it into a nice ball. Because I'm going to turn this into a circular platform for my clay pot to work on top of. And, uh, see here, it's getting more into a sphere. All right, once I got something that looks like a circle, or a sphere rather, I'm going to hit it against the table to start flattening it into a circle. This is going to be my platform. It's going down. And see now, I've got something that looks more like a cookie. I've noticed that I got a seam here. This is from where my canvas crinkled and it got, got impressed into my clay. Before I go any further, I'm just gonna blend that out. May putting a half pound of pressure as I use a downward stroke with my index finger. Next thing, starting from the middle, I'm gonna pinch and work my Self out toward the sides. And now I'm just gonna start turning this thing and pinching as I go. So I'm turning, pinch, turning, pinch, turn, pinch, turn, pinch. And I'm gonna get this thing to about, oh, three eighths of an inch thick. That's sort of my Goldilocks zone for slabs. It's thick enough where I got plenty of room to work with. It's thin enough that my pot isn't all too heavy. So I'm just gonna get that to the basic depth I want. And then I'm gonna go back to hitting it on the table a little bit. Let gravity do the work for you. Gravity is gonna have like a nice even pull on the material and help it flatten out a little bit easier. All right. So yeah, this is looking good. That's about the thickness I want for my starting slab. And now, you know, extra credit points if you've got one of these left over from geometry class, a nice compass. I'm going to use this just to help me get a nice round base. Nice, even and round. And see, I'm just giving it a spin to mark where my platform's going to be. It's going to be a tall, skinny vessel. You can see I got a nice circle there. At this point, you're going to want to get out your needle tool. This needle tool comes in every pottery kit that you can buy. I'm just going to use this as a cutting tool, using that line as a guide. And I'm just going to cut away all this excess clay. I'm gonna keep this because it's gonna be a good first couple coils. All right. Got a pretty thick platform here. I'm actually gonna hit this on the table a couple times just to flatten it out a little bit more. All 
Alright, that'll do. flattening it and made it a little off center. So let's get this out of here. Using that circle as a guide. All right. I'm just going to roll this on its edge a little bit. Help flatten that out. All right, that feels nice and even. So, I think I'm ready to start building. All right, so let's talk about banding wheels. I've got a nice banding wheel in my studio, but I'm gonna assume that a lot of you do not. So we're gonna improvise one real quick. One thing that's really nice is I like to have a little bucket just for my hands so I can wash all my slip off my hands. Okay, so banding wheel. You might not have one, luckily I do, but if you don't have one, you can just grab a simple plate or saucer from your kitchen cabinet that you're not terribly attached to, and that this is just gonna let you rotate your piece a little bit more easily. So I'm gonna put that straight down on the table. I'm gonna be building on top of this. But this surface, it's a really sheer, and the moisture of your clay is gonna to wanna to grab onto this really easily. So I've cut out a little piece of newsprint. I'm just gonna put that down on my plate before I put my platform on there. That way I can always move this off, the paper doesn't stick to the clay, and I can still have the benefit of something to rotate my piece on. All right, so let's get to rolling some coils. I'm gonna use this clay that I cut off as excess as my first couple coils. Hit that in my hands. All right. And since I'm having exposed coils, I wanna do a good job rolling these out. So I'm gonna be using a table to roll all these coils. That way they just look a little bit more precise. Because if I'm just using my fingers to pinch them out, like they're not gonna look as even as I really want for this technique. And I'm gonna be rolling out some long coils that way I have like plenty of access. this in half. And for all these coils, I'm going to go for about the diameter of a number two pencil. So I'm going to keep one of these out as a reference and get my coils to about that thickness every time. Anytime I see a thick spot, I can roll that out a little bit more. But this will be good. All right, so let's get our plate out. I'm gonna put my extra coils out of the way. 
and I'm going to measure my first coil out. Okay. That looks good. And again, I want my coils exposed, so I'm going to blend the inside. And your first coil, you're always going to have to blend first. I just want to bond pinch this right to the bottom. Right. I'll just blend that out right away. All right, got enough here. Almost roll this out a little bit more. Push that together. The other thing is like you can see here, you can see where my coils are attaching one end to the other. And as I go, part of the nice thing about these coil pots is like I want to hide that a little bit. And I don't want my endpoints to stack one right on top of the other, because that's always going to be like a variation of thickness in your wall. And whenever there's a part of your piece that's a little bit thicker than another, it's going to encourage cracking. So whenever I put an X coil on, I'm going to make sure that these endpoints meeting up aren't right near each other. This has two benefits. One, it'll make a stronger wall. And two, it won't make it look like I have a seam going up one side of my pot. It'll make it easier to hide these little joinings. All right. Blend the second coil. Right into the first one. And let's keep going. I don't want to keep too many coils out at the same time because I don't want these to dry as I go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just twist the ends of my coil and I'm going to make two tapered points. That way it's easier to lay these coils on top of each other and blend them together seamlessly. So I'm going to start out with two skinny points, making sure that my joinings aren't right on top of each other. And then I can blend these two things together. Giving it a small pinch and then smoothing it out with my finger. This is air dry clay, so it's a little bit stickier than stoneware. All right. And going in and blending this as I go. Since I'm not going to be blending the outside, 
I gotta make sure that these coils are really well attached. If you have any questions, go ahead and post those in the chat and I'll respond to you in the chat. This coil's a little thick, roll this out. Again, I'm sort of twisting the ends into a tapered point to make the blending of this ring a little bit easier, a little bit more seamless. these two things together. Let's leave that there. All right, I'm gonna blend this part in now, and then we're gonna switch it up for the next coil. Notice how I'm supporting my outside wall with my non-dominant hand as I'm blending. This is so as I'm pushing it, I'm not pushing the wall out too much. I'm holding it in place on the outside as I'm adding pressure from the inside. I just make sure my wall stays straight up. Mm -hmm. you know, if you're at home, feel free to build along with me while I'm doing all this. All right. So I got a pretty good start. I've got four even coils on this outside surface, our coils are exposed. My inside surface is pretty smooth. Smoothed it out, made sure everything's gonna stick together really well. Make sure there's no pits, anything like that. All right, so now I'm gonna put this to the side and we're gonna talk about our next piece because like some of the images we've seen our slideshow, we, we want to try varying our piece a little bit. So what I want to do now is I want to have a coil instead of just going straight across. 
I want one that's more serpentine. I want it to have waves going up and down. And every four coils, I'm gonna add one of these uh, serpentine coils to add like some decorative flair to a non-blended coil pot. Let's start out by, you know, using my fist to get this coil going into sort of the thickness of a cigar before I start rolling it in my traditional fashion, spreading my hands out as I roll to get that coil to stretch. It's gonna to wanna to stay thick in the middle. I just wanna get progressively skinnier at the sides. And I want a real long coil for this because like, since I'm going to be doing a wavy coil, it needs to be about twice as long as my normal coils because it's going to cover a greater surface area. Really stretching this out. So now, I'm noticing my piece still like a little thick. Let's say this is about to check to see if I have it long enough. I want to make sure it can go around twice completely, and this one can. So this will be my coil. I'll use this for my coil afterwards. I'm gonna roll this out just a little bit thinner than my other ones. All right, and now I'm gonna start by just bending this into the shape I want. Starting at one end. This is a great thing to have your ruler out next to you because I want to make sure that these waves I'm creating, see I'm sort of pleating my clay. I love this shape. I love something that's just a repeated S curl. It reminds me of the coils of a brain or, uh, you know, viscera, something that's like a little creepy but cute in the same same space. So I love these soft coils. I want to make sure that they're the same width. So I have my ruler out next to me. That way I can judge I'm not making one undulation taller or shorter than the one that came before it.
let's delicately pick this up and see if I got enough. I do. It's pretty much perfect, y'all. All right. So now I'm going to take my piece. I'm going to decide which surface looks better. Hmm? What do we like more? Do I like this side or do I like the reverse? And honestly, I think my reverse side is a little bit cleaner looking. I see here. I think this side has a little bit nicer of a surface. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this over to the opposite side, keep my coils nice and tight together. I'm gonna start blend all this together because I need this to be nice and strong. And if I'm gonna use this as like a base for a pot, like a flower cutting, something like that, like I need this thing to not have any holes in it. So I'm just gonna take some time. I'm gonna blend all this together now. And you know what, to speed up the journey, I'm gonna get out my wood knife and I'm gonna use this to sort of smash these coils together. First, I was blending them from left to right. Now I'm going back. I'm doing another pass going from right to left. All right, so now now I have a side that's blended together and I have a side that's gonna face out that has my pattern. At this point, I wanna get out my makeshift banding surface, my coil pot. I'm gonna to have to do some scoring and some slipping. My clay's pretty wet, so I'm not going to need a lot of slip here, but I'm going to scratch up this top surface with my serrated rib. The reason we scratch up the surface is it creates a area for our glue to seep into and really grab a hold of. I'm going to get out my slip. And I'm just going to get a little bit of slip on my finger and put a very light coat on top of that area that I scored. All right. All right. I'm also going to get out my brocade powder now, and I'm going to start to put it on. Okay, it's looking pretty good. I see I got a little bit of dry clay. Got a little bit of dry clay in one corner, so I'm just getting that out of there because I want to keep this pattern intact as much as possible. All right. And that's looking pretty good. Once I've got that placed, I 
gonna get out my ruler, make sure this thing is standing up pretty straight. Yeah. All right, now I'm gonna use my wood knife to start blending this together. As you can see on the interior of this, I've got a lot of space that needs to get filled in. It's gonna be hard to be doing that with the soft tip of my finger. So I'm gonna use this scooped edge of my wood knife to blend down. I'm just gonna grab a corner of that clay from this thick coil and I'm pressing it down into the coil that it's resting on. And you know, we're just defining this and then we're gonna go back and refine it. So it doesn't need to be too pretty right now. I'll go back and blend that with my finger later. Always support it with the outside hand. You know, I'm actually finding this easier if I grab some of the clay from the coil underneath and push it up too. So wherever you see you've got more clay to move around, start from there. I'm noticing more success grabbing clay now from the bottom coil and then scooping it up. What I'm doing now is I'm noticing it's a little sloppy where one end of my pattern joined with the other. So I'm just gonna blend that out. So I'm gonna get a little this drop of water on my fingertip and I'm gonna use that to smooth. Let's try to hide that blemish a little bit. All in all though, I think that's pretty successful joining. All right, now we're gonna go on to our next coil. Tapering these two ends, make them nice and pointy. Sort of twisting them together before I pinch to bond them. And now I'm gonna blend them. Get out my wood knife. Blend this coil down 
into my sort of brocade pattern. And I'm noticing that on the interior of this thing, I've got some big pits. You can see light shining through the top and the bottom. And uh, I wanna fill this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take little balls of clay and anytime I see one of those areas with light shining through, I'm just gonna pinch it Putting a little ball of clay in here. I'm just gonna blend that out. Grab a little piece of clay. I got a big area right here. Grab a little ball of clay, flatten it. Sort of using it as a patch to go over that area. And then I'm gonna blend it out. Mm -hmm. And first things first, I'm just gonna do that to anywhere where I see one of those holes. Just grab a pinch, make a patch, put it in there. Pinch, patch, move along, pinch and patch. Pinch and patch. So if like I want this to be a cup, or a vase to hold water. I'm gonna need this inside area to be perfectly smooth. I really like this brocade pattern on the outside. I wanna keep that. The only way to keep that and have it be functional is to fill these gaps with more clay. All right, once I got everything patched up pretty well. Let's go back with our wood knife. Make sure this edge of the wood knife is clean. That way you're not putting dry clay into your wet coil. And we're just going to blend all this out. Now I got a nice smooth interior. You can go back and smooth that out a little bit more. All right, let's uh, get just a couple more coils on top of here. So I see this video is getting a little long and I wanna talk about putting a handle on here. So squeezing these into a cigar shape first before I roll as I spread my hands.
pushing these coils together, blending them. All right. Make sure you blend these. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. This video is getting longer, so I'm gonna skip ahead. You know, I wanna put on some uh, more, another piece of brocade up here, but we'll just call this one tall enough and let's talk about slipping and scoring. So I wanna put uh, two handles on this and I'm gonna be putting on what are called lugs. A lug is just a small handle that maybe you can put a piece of rope through. It often just looks like this. And I'm gonna put a lug on each side. So I have some coils left out. And I'm gonna cut these. They're the size I want. I want these handles to be same size, so I'm cutting them from the same coil. After I've got one cut, I'm putting my next piece of coil right next to it and cutting it to the same size. They're nice and even. And what I'm gonna wanna do to these lugs is I'm going to want and pinch the corners out to be flat. Because when you're slipping and scoring, the wider 
the joint, the stronger the joining. So I'm going to use all this surface area. I'm bending it into the shape I want, the sort of question mark. I'm going to then scratch up one end, scratch up the other. And this whole surface here and here is gonna be joined to the exterior of my pot. I don't wanna just take a coil like this and just scratch up the ends and then put these on the side. It's gonna be a pretty weak joint. It's not a lot of surface area. So by flattening out those two areas, I'm increasing the surface area in contact with my new piece. And I'm gonna put these up here. Once I've judged a good spot to attach my handles, I'm just gonna scratch up where the top of my handle is gonna hit and where the bottom of my handle is gonna hit. It's important to eye this up so your handle is going on straight and making sure you're not accidentally putting your handle on crooked. You want it to be nice and straight usually. Right. After I've got both sides nice and scored, I'm going to put a good dollop of slip on one side. And then I'm going to attach my handle. As I attach this, I'm pushing my handle straight in to my coil. I'm supporting the outside. I'm ex supporting my wall from the inside as I'm pressing in. And I'm actually gonna kind of scooch this. I'm gonna wiggle it back and forth to get that clay to knit. And go down the bottom, wiggle that back and forth to get that clay to knit. And that should hold pretty well. Now I'm gonna go to the opposite side. Blending in that. I'm going to make a mark directly across from where my first handle is because I want this to be a twin. I'm going to flatten out the edges of my coil. I'm going to bend it into the shape that I want, which is that sort of question mark shape. I got these two flat areas now that I can then score and add a little bit of slip, add it to handle side this time. I want to line up and see where my handle is going to fit. So checking that registry mark, I'm going to score up right across and right from the low. press in and I'm going to wiggle that piece. The wiggling causes the clay to sort of catch and knit together. I worked with a guy by the name of Stephen Hill and he showed me the scooching technique and it has almost never failed. All right. So oh, I got these. Cute little lug handles and a coil pot with exposed coils. That concludes my demo. I could keep going up, adding more layers, but um, I think this will be sufficient for now. And yeah, I'll see you back in the chat.